and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me at CGB, and today in the arena, historic brawl with Narset, Enlightened Exile. Just a quick note before we dive in, if historic brawl isn't your jam, or if you just want more CGB, remember to check out the official Magic the Gathering Arena YouTube channel, where there should be a standard video posted today as well. I believe it's going to be Obnixilis combo, so if you want to see me do the all-will-be-one ob combo, check that out. So Narset, Enlightened Exile, the newest Narset. But she looking great. The colors are incredible. She just walks around with Jeskai colors flying around her. That is awesome. But unfortunately, Narset's fallen on some tough times. She's enlightened and all, but she's been exiled for reasons. I don't know who would exile such a queen. Uh, also lost her Planeswalker Spark. Bummer. But has sick abilities. So for one in Jeskai, you get a 3-4. All your creatures have prowess. So if you make a lot of tokens, that's good. Whenever this attacks, you exile a non-creature non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and you copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Hey, that triggers prowess. That's cool. And it's value. I like free spells. So here is your deck. It's trying to pull it all together. Narset on its own is what standard card evaluator Standard card evaluators will call Narset a bad card because Narset is a four mana, do nothing upon entering the battlefield, requires an attack to trigger. Like those are typically not good cards in standard and Narset doesn't pass the standard test. So I was really excited when people in my discord voted it uh, as the commander I will build around first for this set. So thank you for voting in the discord. You should join the discord and vote, it's free. So this deck is a challenge because on one hand to get the most prowess triggers because all your creatures gain it and it's really fun to see your whole board go with all the prowess triggers, that requires making a lot of tokens. And you can build this as a tokens deck. If you want to, you can make a million tokens and get a million triggers. However, what I find when I do that, I cast Narset, she gets countered. I cast Narset, she dies. Very unsatisfying for me. I need to have a little more play than that. So this, this deck is trying to do it all. I don't have cheap token makers like raise the alarm, right? Uh, things that just make two creatures or hordling outburst that makes three creatures. Instead, I kept the cards that trigger off non-creature spells like Third Path Iconoclast and Young Pyromancer. I kept uh, Monastery Mentor and Chrome Host Seed Shark. I have Shark Typhoon. I'm going to try to make tokens using those cards. I want to make a whole little token army with those things. And then those are what I want to pump up with Narset. How do we make sure we pump them up with Narset? Thank you. I'm glad you asked. We protect Narset. We have a lot of commander protection in this deck to make sure that we don't just cast Narset as fodder for counter spells and removal. We want to cast Narset and have Narset live. So Lauren's Escape, Selfless Savior, Skrelv. Uh, you know, that's the tip of the iceberg, but there's a lot more in here. Selfless Samurai, Selfless Spirit, uh, both protectors of our commander. And then there's a bunch of ways to get in the opponent's hand and just disrupt them so they can't cast their board wipes or whatever else they would do to our commander. Invasion of Gobicon makes the cut. So does Anointed Peacekeeper. So does Elite Spellbinder. So we know exactly what to do against our opponents. These cards don't on their own make a ton of sense with Narset, but they do seem to make sense with the, in the spirit of the deck, which is to try to really protect Narset so that the triggers and the attack thing actually works. Same thing with the swords and the, and the Swiftfoot boots, right? We're all just trying to make sure that Narset actually works. Bitter Reunion is sweet to give her haste. Anyway, that's the general strategy of the deck and how it differs from the Narset token deck. A little bit of a longer intro because I felt a need to explain this build, but I think when you see it in action, you'll understand. So let's dive in. Let the Narset enlightened nonsense begin. All right, we are on the draw. We are against Soul of Wind Grace, who is the perfectly keepable Esper Sentinelish hand and anointed Peacekeeper, which might come down before the Soul of Wind Grace. So we keep Twiftfoot Boots to protect our commander. Lands decks, very dangerous. Um, kind of my arch nemesis, I would say, in commander. As for in historic brawl, eh. You know, sometimes, sometimes I get skirted. Most of the time, lands decks, I'm okay. Brotherhood's end, though, not the draw. That is not what we were looking for here. Thoughtseize, also brutal. Let's see if they take the boots. A lot of people are afraid of the boots in commander type formats. They take the Esper Sentinel. All right, uh, we'll get the Foundry online or we'll get the boots down. Um, I mean, getting the Foundry going doesn't mean much until you're putting more mana into it. Let's play the boots. All 
our opponent cultivates up, they're already getting close to wind grace time, which means the peacekeeper might have to keep the peace. Just Jund good stuff and Jund power is very dangerous. And now we're kind of at risk of missing a land drop, which would be absolutely brutal. But you look in their hand and we see blood on the snow. Crucius, not much else. Crucius is good because it can turn these lands into other things. Uh, Windgrace, do we have lands in the graveyard? No, no. But there is a fabled passage. <clears throat> so I guess it is the commander here. I think so. I mean, Crucius, at least we can Brotherhood's End. Of course, that would also involve killing the Peacekeeper unless we get our Wandering Emperor out. But above all, we have to draw land here. If we fail at drawing this land... Okay, got there. And we are on the draw, so I think we can untap this. The opponent doesn't know about the Wandering Emperor. <sniffs> Sorry, sniffles, sniffles. Please block with Crucius. They do not. Um, all right, so damage. We could get down the Whirlwind of Thought. We could also try to get Wandering Emperor plus here, then blow this up next turn. I think that's all just too slow. Let's go for the Whirlwind. I'm gonna need that long-term value to stay in the game because Windgrace is gonna start ramping big time. Okay. Oh wait, if you minus. Oh, please minus. Yes. But they know about Brotherhood's End. What are they doing? Each creature and each planeswalker. Wow. No way. I think they missed this or they just want to play their commander that much. So hopefully we draw land here. We solve two brutal problems. We don't draw the land. We got it last turn. Let's try with the foundry here. Nope, still can't do it. Oof. Falling way behind now. Oh god, world breaker. Yep, and as the battlefield exiles the whirlwind, at least we got two cards. But it's falling apart so quickly. Oh god, come on, stop drawing good stuff. You're pissing me off. Alright, drop this. They discarded blood on the snow, so we have that going for us. This is a 5-7. We're gonna have to remove it with Wandering Emperor. Which, thankfully, they still don't know about. Uh, let's go shock. Let's do a little convoke shenanigans here. We need the cards in our hand badly. Arena and wind grace. That, what a draw. They, they have drawn nothing but fire off the top. I know that they use Crucius to turn some of them into big, powerful spells, which has a lot to do with it, but, like, I mean, you can't script better top decks right there than something like Arena. I mean, if we play this here and just exile the World Breaker... The other thing we could do is equip Narset with the boots, and then we attack and we cast a two-mana card. Is there a two mana spell here that's good? Thought seize, not really. Cultivate, nope. Uh, so I think it's going to be Wandering Emperor, Exile World Breaker, play Narset, attack with it. This turn is this turn, especially if they draw anything good off this arena, if their hot streak continues, is gonna be nasty. Oracle. Okay, alright, alright, Guardian, alright. I feel like they're giving me a chance here. Let's let them fetch with their wind grace. They do get a reshuffle here, which ugh. So it's one in a tap to sacrifice this, turn it into a one one. Okay, now there's a mauling on top, but it's on top. It's not in hand. All right. 
I don't think I want to exile the Wind Grace. I think I want World Breaker gone for good. Slice and dice, here to help your friend Narset. Gotta, gotta help us get through this one. This we got ourselves in a pickle. And now that Thopter we can turn into a 4-4. Four, four. Mauling is land, okay. Pathway, also land. Yep, <laughs> land. All right, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Maybe that must have another land in hand here. They're gonna use Wind Grace to discard it. Now they've got a million lands. They need something to do with it. Soul Shatter on top, very good card. Swords to Plowshares. It's probably the Oracle, if to be honest. All right, what's in the graves again? We can get a Cultivate? A Brotherhood's End. Not quite it. So I think we're using the swords. So. Swords, your oracle. We know their hand, it's this temple. Narset. Oh, missed a prowess trigger, my bad. Show them how we greet our enemies. All right, four or five. Yeah, if I had the prowess trigger, I could cast the stoke the flames. Kind of a miss on my part. Ooh, I can cast the Liliana? Oh yeah! It's not just instants and sorceries, is it? Un. I'll just fumble my way through this first game and get better, I promise. No more distractions. Oh good, she still talks. <laughs> All right, come on, turn the beat around. Make, set them back on Wind Grace, make them play that again, which they, they won't have much trouble doing. They get the Soul Shatter, which can get the Wandering Emperor. <laughs> Off you go. And we need them to not draw something huge. Some big board reset of some kind. All right, 14. One soul shatter, two other cards, a commander, plenty of land. Here's the shatter. Goodbye, Wandering Emperor. Thank you for your assistance. Couldn't have done it without you. Explore. Okay. This would be a good time for our opponent to draw all the lands. Now, now would be great. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. What else he got? Can we get to recasting Vraska? That's the mission now. We have to get Narset's power to seven to do it. Make four, four. Oh, they scoop it up. All right, well, we're representing 10 damage and then cast a spell 11, 12. So it was really close to lethal. Not quite there, but that was a big turn. If they didn't find good answers, they were probably gonna lose. Narset versus Narset. Who built it better? The version I've seen around the most, and the one that Amy the Amazonian did uh, pretty early, it was either day one or two of the set, was Tokens. So I tried a version with a whole bunch of just make a lot of stuff, play Narset, and then attack. My issue with that is if they killed the Narset, I didn't feel like I did anything. So I built a version more interested in protecting Narset and having a couple of token machines. So I like my version, but... There's a different version running around. Search for his Kanta, though. That implies straight up control Narset, which I didn't know that could be a thing. Wasn't a thing I wanted to build, but I'm sure if it's a blue commander, there are some people who will build it full of card draw and counter spells. I want this. I also want land. Uh, I think I'm just going to blow this up, though. Hopefully we draw land next turn. It's tempting to save the destroy evil for the Narset, but they might just not play it till they can protect it with a counter anyway, and then we're just losing a long game to his Kanta. Brainstorm? Put two back. Wish I had the Narset out for that. 
Okay, uh, I mean, we could slam our commander here and have it protected. I think that's just what you do. Yeah, I think that's just what we should do. If they have something like Swords to Plowshares and they get around our protection, so be it. I think we take that risk. Urabrask. Have destroy evil in the yard. That's... You're, you're feeding me fodder, yo. All right. Let's show down into a land. Beautiful. Okay. Lauren's escape. Invasion of Govacon Mountain. No blue source for the consider. Let's play this and have the escape available, but we're probably just going to play the Sentinel. Let's go to combat. Let's exile the destroy evil. Let's play it. Toughness four or greater. Bang, bang. Superior Narset build located. I mean, yep. Urbras didn't get to do much there. We are on the draw with three pain lands, a brotherhood's end, a scrub's hive against the moot vizier of Noctamoon, which is usually a haste centric deck. I... I think what I'm doing is Reunion, Discard, Hive, Hope, Brotherhoods, and fixes the board. So we're going to keep this hand, but when your lands deal you this much damage, it's terrifying. Sentinel. Really good turn one draw there, just to have something on the board. Opponent steals a Narset, you monster. We'll take two this time. I might block next turn to prevent the opponent from drawing cards. Reunion. Let go of the Hive. Definitely on the draw in this spot. That's not what we're looking to do. Invasion of Segovia and Sejiri Shelter, also not great. So our opponent is very much a creature deck. I'm just going to take this block and keep them from drawing. We go to 19. Selfless Spirit. All right. Three points. Slow down, dude. Slow the heck down. Please, no questing beast. I have scars from Eldraine that have not healed. Signet? Okay. <clears throat> Lamhold. All right, that's really bad for us. It makes blocking nearly impossible, and we didn't draw an untapped land for Wandering Emperor, which is nasty. So what the heck do we do? We would play a Selfless Spirit. If they played this, attacking with both, we'd still be able to block with it. Um, Definitely have to play this. I guess we still have the mana to loot, so we'll loot now in case it changes our play. Oh, yay, lands we can play that don't hurt. Very important. Okay. Uh, I think this can go and this can go. Don't think it's what we need here. Spirit. Hang in there, buddy. All right, it's back. It draws a card if it hits because it enters the battlefield this turn. Oh no, don't have something else. No, that's a disaster. Good God, now we can't block anything. Freaking champion of Lambhold. All right. Well, let's uh, try to ambush something, I guess. What a did? Oh, that's so bad. But here we can Wandering Emperor, get rid of the champ, and then block something. Bombardment. No! Stop! Fervent champion. The dis Oh. What a disgrace. I can't even do anything about that. Blocking that is like first strike. The first strike will get to me. Alright, exile you. Chump block you because they draw a card if it hits. We've got haste from bitter reunion. We can cast the Brotherhood's End again. And that's, I think, what we have to do. 
But with all the haste creatures, I don't have a lot of optimism. We've got the edge in this fight. Opponent GG's me, never forget. I think they have enough mana to cast it again anyway, but we took our shot. We did our best. Actually, no, it's the third time it died. The curse does block it out, so they just need any haste creature, though, and they're okay. Rekindling Phoenix ain't it. Oh, they GG'd me. They GG'd me, guys. Never forget. Peacekeeper. How do we get rid of this Phoenix? Can we get rid of this Phoenix? I don't see it. I do not see it. Oh, wait. We can recast Wandering Emperor, but then we, we have to tap this somehow. Uh, Shark Typhoon can block it. That can buy a turn. Three life is so low. Do I have any way to gain life here? I don't see that either. Bitter Reunion. I guess. Does a thing. The opponent might not block. They probably won't block. So what do we cast? I think it's Invasion. Can out block the Simut. They take it. Beautiful. All right, this is whenever a creature with you control with power two or less attacks one damage. And we're taking a damage for the Peacekeeper. My goodness. Um, is killing this useful? No, block, chump blocking it is useful because then we can bring back Wandering Emperor and exile it. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, they have unblockable from key to the city. Oh no. So we have to hope. So we have to hope that they play the card they draw, right? That's what we need to hope. Oh, God. Hopefully they just play it out without thinking because we have no flyers. Yeah, that's what we need to do. So in the meantime, let's keep locking out some moot. So they can't just play that and have a card sitting in there. So please play your card. Play your card. Play your card. Play your card. Yes. Wait, no, it flies. <gasps> no. And they have to take, we have to take one damage and it deals us one. And oh, uh, oh, uh, so sad. I'll show them what I had. I really wanted to pound. I, I really wanted to beat their early GG evil tactics. Their scumbag behavior. Oh, well. We'll get them next time. We'll get them next time. That early GG, I'm going to rub it in your face someday. And on the draw, too clunky, too slow, missing a color. Um, I mean, maybe Ragavan will fix it? Anyway, we are playing against Alenda, the Duskrose, so vampires. So I don't know if Ragavan will actually get through, which could be a bit of a disaster here if we name red, untap this land, and never draw a white source. So hold on to your butts. We're going for it. Nope, don't do it. Draft. Hey, the white source. Okay, let's go with the samurai and the attack. Clarion Spirit with Alenda, though. More of a token build than a vampire build, I think. Bastion. Oh, that makes a 1-1. One, one. Come on. All right. We get to Fable. Fable's cool. Let's go. Not attacking that 1-1, one, one, though. Maybe another way to get some treasure. Morin. Wow. Opponent is out to disappoint me today. It's kind of their job, so I get it. <laughs> the standard technology for how to beat Fable, right? The Wandering Emperor is a great draw. Because I think I know what's gonna happen here. 
We're playing standard. Fable versus Lauren versus Wandering Emperor. Uh, and Ragavan, which will probably be reprinted in standard at any moment, the way things are going. Strike fast and strike hard. Ow. The Phyrexian Tower with Lenda means that exiling her isn't really an option, so this could get ugly. So how does she work? Whenever a creature dies, any creature other than Alenda. Plus one, plus one counter. When it dies, create X11 one, one vampire creature tokens with lifelink, where X is the power. Ew. Ew. All right, Wandering Emperor. Help my monkey find victory. It's been a very sad monkey that hasn't been able to get in and make treasure. We get the chumps. Yep. Linda starts to tick up. So, with a time wipe in hand, do we play out Kaikar? Also tempting to play the Sorcerer's class and not play out Kaikar. Kaikar is a really good card. And the Wandering Emperor does want d some defense. So we're committing to the board, which means our Sorcerer's class might discard this time wipe. And maybe next turn we can actually transform Invasion of Gobicon too. Chupa! Oh, what's your target? Yep. Kaikar, getting scary here. Let's see if Alenda wants to rumble with the Emperor, but becoming a bigger and bigger lifelinker. I think we're going to see a pretty good Alenda game, which you don't get to see often. It hasn't always been the best commander. A beloved one, but not always the best, but... With a sack outlet with a good sacrifice deck instead of a vampire theme deck, I think Alenda's very dangerous. Land off the top. I'm sure Chupa will block here, which means we have to keep giving it first strike, but that does mean we can transform. So let's start here. What you got in that hand? They can also make one ones by sacrificing Alenda at instant speed, but then they've got to cast her and do it all again. Intervention, Oblivion, oh, Oblivion's very frustrating. Making this cost a lot is probably just a good call. We can kind of price Intervention out of the game, though. Just make it too expensive to use. I still think Oblivion's the dangerous one, though. All right, nobody's going to defend this Wandering Emperor. If I... I definitely don't want to use the minus on Alenda yet. I think I need to attack first, but then my Ragavan doesn't have first strike. So yeah, let's do this. Wandering Emperor needs no defense. The job is done. Besides, I want to transform this battle. Are you doing it now? Oh, wow. They're doing it now to defend the battle. Kind of early, but yeah, I mean, it works. That's why the Phyrexian Tower is a pretty messed up uh, addition. Oh, they're blocking so much, though. They're blocking so much they can't kill Wandering Emperor next turn. They want to get rid of the Shaman. Wow. Okay. So we know they don't. They have Rite of Oblivion, which is four mana and sack something to exile something. So we know they can get rid of the Narset. I think if we wait, they'll use it on the Emperor or the Ragavan. So let's be patient. Let's drop the Sorcerer's class. Okay, that's a lot of land. Give up these. We have a Ganjo. Sneaky a Ganjo is open to take out this 1-1 one, one if they try to, like, somehow buff it up to attack the Emperor. Oh, are they Agademing? Two, three, four. Pretty good Agademes. They did leave her in the graveyard. Should have been a tell. Then we can blow it up. They don't know about the time wipe. Rude. Okay, so we're not getting through. Let's do it like this. They all will get a 1-1, one, one, I think.
Oh no, they, yeah, just A11. So we could dash the Ragavan and go after the invasion here and then they'd have to block if we want them to have no creatures. I think we're better off just this, this. We must protect the people. And the battle continues. They've let the Wandering Emperor hang out for a really long time. It's produced some pretty good board advantage. Is it time to use Rite of Oblivion? Nope. Replay Helenda. Okay, bitter reunion off the top. Starting to set up Narset. An attack right now, if they block with both, we can Ganjo the Elenda. Set it back to start. That's something. Show them how we greet our enemies. See what they do? All these vampires, man. Okay, we're gonna let the invasion go to one. Let's use the reunion and try to set up a hasty Narset. Soul partition lightning helix. Sweet. You know, they have the tower tapped right now. It might be the best time to soul partition this Alenda, but I'm not that afraid of it yet. I feel like something better will come. I can't believe Ragavan is still around. Did I see a monkey last this long? Still hasn't made a treasure, by the way. <laughs> That's probably why it lasted this long. Are we going in? With the intervention? Okay, so sacrifice this what? Creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible. Crap. Alright, um hmm. Well, do it anyway. Now we got stuff in the graveyard for the Narset. I'm sad to lose the reunion though. We did know it was there. We soul partition now, they sack it, they make the stuff. Probably Narset time. We do have the soul partition for the save. Both of these are big enough. Get him. Come on. Let let the monkey have a treasure. Anything but that. Anything but Ragavan making a treasure. It must be it must be forever avoided. Here's Narset. And I think I'm just going to plus. Make Narset bigger. I'm sure it will be the target. But in case there's a board wipe, I want the Wandering Emperor's power, uh, loyalty to stay high. Is it time for that Rite of Oblivion at long last? Uh, okay, tower. We go to 15 from this stupid Bastion. I think the Bastion's the only thing that's damaged me this game. There's the board wipe. Okay, um, so we survive with the soul partition because Narset has prowess. So, like this. And weren't able to play around the prowess. There's a Heliod's Intervention down there, right? If I target it, can I put the mana into it to take out these? What would that need to be? I need to have Narset's power at five. So I do this. I'm gonna try. I'm not sure it works that way, to be totally honest with you. Let's dash. And get this on the field. So, cast. Oh, yes. Destroy X. No! Submit. Ah! I can't put the mana in. You suck. All right. Well, is it letting me? Nope. 
I already exiled it. It's great. Yeah. Well, now I learned. I find those rules to be one of the only things I still am very... I, I find them incredibly unintuitive. And other people find them incredibly intuitive. So some of you are laughing at me. Some of you are also like, does that work? Does that not work? Okay, apparently we can't choose an X, even if it's less than Narset's power. It's very frustrating, to be honest. Also, we exiled a land. Feels bad, man. So what would we have cast instead if we could cast something else? The invasion? Probably the invasion. Or the fable. Yep, so we could have an invasion or a fable here, which is probably going to swing the game quite a bit if I'm... Yeah, for real. For real, it's going to swing the game. Because of course they have some removal. And Narset is gone. And they have 32 life. So the road back to like even some kind of parody is so far. Hit. Rude Moth. Yeah. Let's go. Pretty good card. Let your blade do the talk. Here's a spirit. So we have indestructible. Uh, I wish I could replay this now on the just chill inside. Maybe next turn. But we've got a board. And Narset has some kind of protection from the brood moth. And the opponent has a very expensive Alenda and some enchantments, so maybe we're still in it. It's been like, how many turns has this been out there? And the opponent, yep, they got around to it. It's time to write of oblivion, the Wandering Emperor. <laughs> oh man. The day has come. Heliod. Heliod. Yeah, I guess those are life-linking tokens. Makes sense. Are we dashing? I mean, if they're open, we're dashing. We could also attack with the hall, but I want the virtual card advantage. They've got to have some good cards in there I can steal. Mindstone. Okay. We play a Mindstone. Play a land. Play Narset. If they exile the Narset with the right, though, I think I'm supposed to wait out right of Oblivion? Nah, this is commander card advantage. If they get rid of Narset with the right, we have the mana now. We can play her again. Uh, there you go. Well, we can do this. Nice. All right, we got this 5-4 on the ground. Now we have to figure out what to do with this Narset. We can get it up to a four power before we attack. So we can cast three drops. We can cast the Fable. We can cast Soul Partition and Helix. We can cast Rite of Oblivion. That has to be it, right? Right. Uh, we got these treasures to sack too. All right, let's do it. Oh, I think they figured out my line at right about the same time I did. Exile Rite of Oblivion, cast it on the Gear Hulk. Bam, bam, bam. Another hit from Ragavan. Go from there. All right, we go first with a sweet hand. More Ragavan. Seem to draw Ragavan a lot today. Must be nice. Monkey see, monkey do. fun we could just hold up protection but i'm gonna play the thing i stole because i want to creeper do it now man is gonna be important and put him right back the way we found him All right. Can't exactly remove this. We could play the Narset, though, and hope that they don't have the answer. But we have boots, so that seems pretty bad. Uh, let's go for Ragavan attack and see if they block with their mana creature. They do. Okay. Protection! Kill it. I'd rather kill the mana creature. Boots on the ground. 
So Narset can be coming in hot. Rishkar. Okay. Strong style over here. Here she comes. Boot up. And uh, we could go pro green. That seems pretty good. Hit her. Next turn, hopefully see the truth and see the truth. Can help us find answers to Prime Speaker Vanifar before it goes crazy. And here she comes. When she starts sacrificing things, nonsense happens. They fetch things that untap her to sacrifice more, to work up to the point where she turns some three drop into a seven drop or something more evil. So we've got to find a way to remove. Right now, it's not there. So let's see the truth. This card is sweet because if you use Narset with it, you get a really, you get basically a draw three. All right, let's tap this for blue, red, blue. Yeah. Go with this. Prowess, prowess, prowess. A uh, curse? Nope. Samurai? Nope. None of those do it. I'll put this in hand. I don't think we need the Samurai in this matchup. I'll put Curse in Exile. Can I afford to cast it here? Might as well get the Prowess now. I'm gonna name Vanifar optimistically that we can get rid of it. One red in the mana pool. Could use it to cast something. But I have to have mana left over to cast the removal spell if I find it. See the truth. We have dug so far. Will we get there this time? Those are land. <laughs> Down to nine. I'm blown away. All right. No answers in the top 12 or so cards of the deck. All you, opponent. What you got? Let the fireworks happen. Ornithopter. Neoform. One-shot Xanifar. Vanifar. I always say Z. I don't know why. You look like you should have a Z in your name, but what can I do? Manowar. Bounce the Ragavan. I mean, I can dash it. I'm kind of surprised by that. Thought they bounced the carry added to their own hand. All right, Sack Mana War. Get what? Manifestation Sage. Make a four four. Well, that wasn't as terrifying as I expected. This card is pretty good. I mean, keep digging. Eventually, we'll find something, right? Um, cancel. Hold on. I need a prowess trigger before this taps for double. Hmm. <clears throat> it's very close to Brotherhood's End to get through. We also have a slip out the back right here that we can use. This taps for two now. Slip you. Oh yeah, we're coming through for the damage. It's there. It's there. We are an attacking deck. And we will behave like one. Congratulations, your creatures have phased out. We have used slip offensively, and we will pick up the victory. On the play with the hive, so a chance for the hive to prove itself. 
one of the more sus cards in the deck. I did want something that made an army to make Narset's ability uh, to give everything prowess really good. And there are a few cards that do that, like Chromo Seed Shark is a, probably a good example, but I thought the Hive could make the cut. However, so far it's been pretty bad every time I've drawn it, but this is the first time I've had it in my opening hand on the play. Hmm. What's the opponent up to over there? Let's go straight to the... Hmm, let's go Elite. Let's see how their removal is doing. Give me a look at this hand. So... A lot of expensive stuff and a lantern. The forge is kind of interesting. Cormella works best with big spells and there aren't that many. I think I will just take the lantern and keep them from ramping. Forge, forging Cormella is pretty weird. So the glamour thief is makes mana to cast instant and sorcery spells. You see, there's not many here. Forge is going to make a creature every turn. Its power is steadily going to get larger. All right. No removal. In theory, we can go for the Narset. That said, is that even the best play? We don't have spells to get back. Maybe the best thing we can do is put more pressure on the opponent. With Jaya. Making monks. And then maybe we'll end up casting Narset and a cheap spell in a turn or two and then giving everything prowess that turn and hitting extra hard. All right, the Glamour Thief is here. Double attack on Jaya. I think I'll block one. No manners. What a shame. All right, can we hit land? No. So we have to try, which is why we protected Jaya. Eyes open. All right, sword. Let's go. Fun. It's gonna fill their graveyard. That might be good for them. I really don't care. <laughs> We're going in. Ooh, look at all the pretty toys. Aha! <laughs> Jaya lives because of the wolf. That's it? That's all they had? They didn't cast the overload? Okay. They're, 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 time wa they're time walking me. And I have no instance. How embarrassing. Oh, God. Discontinuity ends my turn in my own upkeep. So they drew some of those big. They drew some of those nice big spells. All right, Jaya. Good try. Still love you. Can't snuff me out. Fortell? All Runs Epiphany? I think they would have cast All Runs Epiphany. All right, Overload. They get back... What? All Runs Vortex. Okay. Interesting. What are they going to do? Bounce my Spellbinder? Springleaf Drum. Weird. I just cannot draw. <laughs> I, I guess we could go for this and the Drum, right? And a Prowess Trigger? That's pretty good. Since we're kind of racing. Yeah, we talked about this plan. Just prowess it up. Get him. They can't block the sword of body of mind creature. So that's a whole bunch of lifelink and they drop to four. Millum and Wolfum. Yeah, Vortex uh, hand is fine. Thank you. <laughs> That's a graveyard. Let's see what they can do here. They've got the Arcane Bombardment. But if they tap out for that, I don't think they can get there. Uh, wow, attack with both. Oh yeah, all runs Epiphany, right? We are at 28. It's going to be a hard one for them to get all the way. But they're going to have these birds. And they're going to have extra turns. Because those are fair and balanced. It's actually going to be closer than I'd like it to be. Everybody else staying home? Nope. Did they find a solution to the sword? That is the biggest question now. And can we draw a prowess trigger? Just one prowess trigger. We're down to 11. Do 
boots. That'll do. Oh, wait. There's a few things we can do here. We can go for the Narset, but if they counter the Narset, then we don't get the prowess trigger, right? But if we go for the boots and just put them on one of these, at the moment it's lethal. But then just any removal spell gets them out of that. So we probably should go for something cheaper, right? And then try to boots equip to it. Something that triggers when we cast a non-creature spell. Yeah, let's go for the mentor. Your Hulk, uh-huh. And so close. It does look like we're gonna miss it by one little damage. Why didn't it let me use my Springleaf Drum there? I need to use that for mana. Boots, equip, but then no mana to move the sword. <sighs> uh, okay. Make a monk. Gotta get the lifelink. Fifteen. Beacon Bolt. Can't afford to tap a creature to use the boots, I think. We can't go to one, either. Ugh. Time warp's down there now. The opponent can kill their own Cormella, they can get it. Sort of body and mind strikes again. No, not the one life! Now they can use their Sulphur Springs for mana. Is this target creature? It is. And when this dies, return instant or sorcery to your hand. Time warp is down there. The game's over. But they've got to find it. That ain't it, but maybe they found another way. Being so careful. Interesting. Eat life. Trigger. Past turn. What can get through? Nothing gets through. They must have a solution for the sword. Nothing else would make a lot of sense. Three blockers. Boots! Yeah? Eh? They're at two? They're at two? Okay. Does it work? What do you got? What do you have? Oh, come on. What do you have? You've had so many tricksy things. What do you have? Impulse. Never didn't have it. And we are back for the post-game wrap. And Narset Enlightened Exile is a very fun commander. It doesn't compete in the highest tiers because it has a lot of challenges. Only getting the trigger when it attacks means that you have to have commander protection. Only giving all your creatures prowess means you have to have a lot of creatures. So it helps to have the creatures that make a bunch of creatures. But prowess also requires non-creature spells. So it's a very interesting build around with, as I mentioned, a lot of challenges. It can't be an upper tier commander because of those challenges. but 
but it doesn't compete in Hell Q. It does, it gets paired against a bunch of other very, like an actually very diverse range of commanders. So I've really enjoyed playing Narset in Light and Exile because I feel like I get a lot of deck diversity and I feel like it's a very challenging deck to play. It scratches that itch for making me feel clever today. So if you would like to feel clever today, give it a shot. I really like her. I like this build. I think you'll enjoy it. If you want to go with the wider tokens version because prowess triggers just tickle your, you know, brain, brain chemicals, do what you got to do. But I like this one. I like protecting the commander more and not relying too much on it being alive or keeping it alive. All right, uh, remember to please go check out the video that is, let's see, today I'm recording on a Sunday, so tomorrow's Monday, so the official Magic the Gathering Arena YouTube channel, the way I have it set up is every time you might see a historic brawl video, there's also a standard video on one of the other channels, and watching on those channels does support me a lot, um, quite a bit. I, uh, I do not do those things for charity, and I would like to keep those arrangements. It really benefits me a lot, so thank you to everybody who watches the videos on the other channels and thank you for staying till the end of this video you're cool CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of me, CGB, and you can get my unique Dragon Rider token and 5% off your entire order by using the code CGB5 at checkout. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this sweet dragon token. If you need singles for constructed or kitchen table play, and you want to pick up sealed product or the latest magic accessories, remember to use the code CGB5 at checkout for 5% off and get my Dragon Rider token. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock.